Hello and welcome to ELT Lounge podcast, the podcast about language learning and teacher training. I'm Shadil Turki and this is episode number two. First and foremost, thank you so much for the great comments that you left yesterday on the post and also your questions on the WhatsApp group. And in this episode, we are going to answer the question of how to deal with low achiever learners. First of all, we need to know how to recognize that they are low achievers. We have three main things to cover or to notice. Number one, the lack of concentration in class. When they don't focus with you, when they lack concentration while activities or while uh, sharing ideas with their colleagues, that means they don't know how to achieve properly. Number two, the lack of basic skills and knowledge. When they lack such basic knowledge or skills, that they should have on such a level, for example. Also, that means that's a sign for low achievement. Number three, the difficulty in comprehension, whether in comprehending audio tracks or reading passages. So let's now look at some reasons why we can have low achiever learners inside the classroom. I have here seven reasons why we can find them. Number one, the content is too difficult for them. When you teach a certain content to a group of students on a certain level, you need to make sure that you chose the right content to teach. Because sometimes teachers bring a very difficult content to teach. And they think after that, that the problem is in the learners, not the content. But we need to figure out, is the content appropriate? Is it relevant to their level or no? So this is reason number one. Number two, the time required for the learning or the, the, the process itself is very short. Like... Imagine that I'm giving you a, a book or a curriculum that you have to study only in two months. That might be one of the reasons why they can't achieve highly. They can't um, recognize how to do or how to study. So the time pressure or the short time is one of the reasons here. Number three and this is a very good point to consider, lack of practice, revision, or recycling info. Sometimes teachers do not practice with learners. They only lecture, they only deliver information, and they neglect uh, the part of the practice, the review, and the recycling as well. And this is a big issue. We need to solve this matter as soon as possible because it's one of the very very significant reasons why they are low achievers reason number four wrong studying strategies or wrong studying habits you need to ask your learners how do you study at home how do you review your lessons how do you do your homework try to help them with very effective solutions and give them effective strategies to, to abide by. Um, for example, some learners, they just attend the session, they go home, they do the homework, and they say, done, I'm all set. They feel that they are ready for the next session. However, they didn't do anything. They just did homework, and that's like, that has nothing to do with studying. Doing the homework, by the way, is a step to go to the next session with a very high level of understanding. But studying or preparing, preparing yourself to read the next chapter, to read the next lesson, to prepare the vocabulary, to prepare the grammatical chunk with the teacher, try to understand, yeah, this picture is going to be the next lesson. 
idea and it's going to be the next lesson's topic, so I need to understand it from now. You have to give your learners such help regarding studying strategies. Don't tell them go swimming without giving them the tools to swim. Number five, from time to time, we have some problems either when it comes to the physical problems or the psychological problems. Physical like disabilities, maybe uh, people on wheelchairs, people on um, like uh, people with some um, like, I mean, they are handicapped, like visually impaired, for example, uh, or they uh, have hearing issues. And psychological here, uh, the psychological problems are a lot. Uh, the two common ones, for example, are dyslexia and ADHD. So once you find a problem uh, of these issues, you need to figure out a quick solution. Either by contacting their parents, if they are kids, or by contacting with them personally, one-to-one. -one. Ask them, how would you like to learn? What's the most suitable thing for you? What would make you comfy in class? Because the physical and the psychological issues are really, really crucial here when it comes to reasons why they have low achievement. Number six, and the one before the last, lack of motivation. They don't have any motivation to come to the class because all the time the teacher is giving them hard time, is putting them under the spotlight when they make any mistakes. So you need to make them feel confident. You need to provide them with motivation, as we will know later on in the tips. The last reason, reason number seven, is the poor teaching methods or assessment techniques. Sometimes the problem is not in the learners. Sometimes it's in you, the teacher. So you need to figure out, am I using the suitable, the appropriate method? Is this method uh, or is this method suitable for my learner's style? Is it appropriate for their age? Is my assessment technique appropriate for this exam or for this um, type of assessment? Like if you're, if you're having a formative or a summative assessment, are you using the right exam to test them? You need to ask yourself all these questions to figure out if you are on the right track or no. Now let's take a look at some things to do or some tips to follow. I have actually 10 tips for you to follow to deal with low achiever learners. So here we go. Number one, change your attitude with them. And I highlight, change your attitude with them, with learners. When they low achieve, please do not put them under the spotlight or do not curse them. Do not underestimate them. Don't tell them that I told you zillions of time before that you should do it like this and you still do it like that. You're stupid. You're no, 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 no. Please change your attitude with them. Tip number two. Give them clear step-by-step -step instructions. And when we talk about step-by-step -step instructions, some teachers do not do that. They just give instructions very quickly and they ask ICQs very quickly so that they can maintain time and maintain time management, but they don't care about low achiever learners. Low achiever learners need clear and step-by-step -step instructions and make them so, so simple. As we said in the last episode, follow the KISS rule. Keep your instructions short and simple. Number three, give them extra help when needed. 
and I highlight when needed. Don't try to over help them or don't go extra mile unless they ask you to do so. If you found that they are struggling doing a certain activity, just try to give a hand. Tell them, okay, don't worry. Let's do it together. Let's highlight some points and you will do it after that on your own. So try to make a deal with them. Help them get the message, but don't over help them. Otherwise, they'll depend on you no matter the, what is uh, the activity or uh, how uh, it's easy or difficult. Number four, motivate your learners and foster their baby steps. Low achiever learners usually have baby steps. They don't achieve what other students achieve. So you need to foster such improvement. You need to encourage and motivate such achievement, even if it's a small one. Make them feel that they did something great. By the way, teaching is not just about teaching. It's also about psychology. You need to understand how to deal with learners in general, not just low achiever learners, any type of learner. And this is one of the skills that any teacher should have. We only focus on developing uh, ourselves professionally when it comes to certificates, when it comes to um, studying, reading reference books and so on and so forth. But we neglect this part. We need to read more about the psyche of our learners. We need to read more about how they feel, how they think. And once you know all of these things, you will utterly know how to deal with them. Tip number five, know their learning style or preference. If I know that this class love to learn um, by movement, they love to learn by visuals. So do it. Just bring tools that can be catered for them. Uh, bring things that can help them feel connected to the session. But don't go and bring audios while they like visuals. So such methods or such um, considerations can help them feel that they have a good rapport with the teacher. The teacher is caring, all right? Tip number six, set, and please focus on this one, set achievable objectives. And when we say achievable objectives, try to break your big objectives down into small ones. And always follow the SMART technique. When I say SMART, I mean here the one with capital letters, S-M-A-R-T, SMART. And this is the method by which we put our objectives. Uh, for those who don't know SMART, it stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, or Attainable, or even Acceptable, Realistic, and Timed. These five things that we need to consider when we put or set our objectives are really, really crucial. Don't give them like unachievable tasks and predict that they will do it or they will do them. No, just give them the right thing that suits their level. Number seven, anticipate problems and find out solutions. When you go to teach a certain group and you know that they have low achiever learners, try to predict or expect what could be the problems that I might encounter inside the class and find out solutions for them before you even go. Because when you prepare yourself for the problem, you yourself as a teacher will feel so confident about solving the issue. For example, if you know that this grammar lesson uh, that you're about to teach is so, so difficult for normal people, just try to 
think of a creative idea to deliver such a lesson to those people and make them feel not difficult anymore. But when you don't anticipate such a point, you go, you start explain, you did your part, you prepared, you explained, but still no one is following. Why? Because you didn't anticipate such a point that they might not follow with you, that they might not understand your way of explaining. So anticipation is also a great point here when it comes to solving this problem. Number eight, give them, and please highlight this point with me, give them immediate feedback. Low achiever learners do not need delayed feedback. No, they need a hot feedback, or as we say, a feedback on the spot. Feedback on the spot is key in such cases. Why? To avoid fossilization. Don't make them have any fossilized piece of information without correcting it. Always correct. Always put them on the right track. Just tell them what to do and what not to do. And at that time, they would start to feel, yeah, I'm having more correct points. I'm doing a great job. I'm achieving. I'm progressing. And therefore, they will feel so happy, and you will feel also happy. Number nine, always put them in groups or pairs with high or top achievers. And this point is related more to the differentiation method or to give differentiated instructions. Differentiation or uh, uh, differentiated instructions is a very wonderful technique that we apply when we have mixed ability classes. And when we talk about mixed ability classes, we mean low achievers, high achievers, uh, or top achievers. We mean people with disabilities, people with no disabilities. Uh, they try to help one another, collaborate, cooperate, um, just to be together, they level themselves up one by one. So just give them different activities uh, so that they can help one another and try as much as you can to put them in the right group. And please, if you know that some of the top achievers do not like to have low achievers, with them in the same group, don't include low achievers with them. Why? Because such top achievers might make fun of those low achievers, and that would make the case even worse. So try to have like a contract with those uh, top achievers. Tell them, if you helped your colleagues here to achieve this task, you would get some points in in the final uh, exam, for example, or in the project uh, of the mid-year, uh, the mid-year exam or the mid-year uh, project here. So just try as much as you can to find a way to convince or persuade those learners, I'm talking now about the top achievers, to help low achievers. And by doing such a thing, you will level all the class up without any problems or without any hard feelings. Number 10, the last step. Put them at ease when they feel down or when they feel frustrated. Low achievers, they sometimes feel depressed. I don't want to talk. I don't want to participate. Uh, I don't want to share with my colleagues. Try to put them at ease. Tell them it's easy. Please take it easy. I'm just doing this to help you. I'm just doing this to make you reach your goal. Try to help me as I help you. And with any mean, with any means of help, please, please, please give them a hand. Don't tell them, okay, you don't want to talk. 
All right, you can stay silent today. Uh, you don't want to participate? All right, no problem. Next time you can participate. No. Please ask them kindly to share. And as we always say, never leave a student or a learner empty-handed in class. Otherwise, they will make noise, they will make troubles, or even they will make you as a teacher overthink about your teaching method. Am I right? Am I doing my great job? Am I on the right track? So if they don't do anything in class, they would cause you, uh, they would cause you actually uh, a point or a sense of um, prepare, lack of preparation, a sense of um, maybe you will start to downgrade yourself or underestimate yourself that I didn't do the right thing. I didn't do my best to reach their level. No, just try as much as you can to follow the 10 tips to help the low achiever learners. But before we say, uh, or before we reach the end of this episode, I have three warnings to you. Number one, never ever give a passing mark to those who don't deserve. If you know that they are low achiever learners, you try it once, twice, thrice with them, and still they can't achieve. Don't just give them a passing mark because you love them. Don't give them a passing mark just because you feel uh, sympathetic or empathetic with them. No. Sometimes when you make them fail, they start to recognize what's going on. They start to think or reconsider their choices one more time. So don't just be so generous when it comes to marks, right? And this will take us to the next point, which is be professional and judge fairly. Please do not take it personally. Just be professional. Don't say that, yeah, that, that learner is doing this just to make me feel pissed off or just to make me feel uh, that I'm not a successful teacher, so I will make them fail. No, just judge fairly when it comes to assessment or testings and try to give them what they really, really deserve. Number three, and the last warning. Let them uh, or let the students, parents, and the school principal as well be on the same page with you. Try to follow up with the parents or the principal and let them know what's going on with you in class. Just in case they came after that and make any complaints. Guys, I told you from the very beginning that your kids or your children have a problem. And now you're coming to blame me? No, I did my part. Okay, so just put yourself uh, on the safe side and try to make them follow up with you all the time. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great idea, actually, to ask them to give you ideas, to give you suggestions uh, how to solve this problem with their kids. Because sometimes parents know more than you know. Uh, the principal sometimes knows more than you know. Maybe they just had such an experience before, they came across such a case before, and they can help you. So let the school principal and parents on the, uh, be on the same page with you. So um, after we knew the seven reasons why we can have low achiever learners and the 10 tips for how to deal with them, now I can tell you that's what we had time for today. And I hope that it was so beneficial for you. And as usual, 
Don't forget to leave a comment to tell me that you need to join the WhatsApp group so that you can ask any question you have. And until tomorrow, stay safe and goodbye.